Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Michael Carrier. I work here at Diesel Laptops in the training department. Today we're going to be going over the software PF Diagnose. PF Diagnose is a mid-level software for checking fault codes, looking at live data, and performing regenerations on most light, medium, and heavy duty vehicles. I'm going to teach you how to use the software from start to finish on all tasks you will need to perform as a technician. As you can see on screen, we have the icon for PF Diagnose on the shortcut, and we're going to go ahead and double click on this to launch the software. Now that we have the software open, what we need to do now is set our adapter settings and finish our setup. So there's two ways to go about changing our adapter settings. We can either click change here by the adapter, or we can go to the top bar and click on the two gears to the right of the eraser and get into our setup. So we'll go ahead and click change here. All right, before we start making our adapter changes and getting it set up, I do want to mention that to use this software, you must have an adapter uh, that is RP1210 compliant in order to use the software and communicate with a vehicle. Now going forward, we'll go ahead and select Auto Connect, a selected adapter. Here you can select Primary Protocol. You can select CAN Channel. You can go down and select your adapter. Today we're working with the USB Link 2. And then here we can see an image of our USB Link 2 and we're going to go ahead and click Save. Now that we have made our adapter settings and setup, we can go ahead and click on the connect button as I am connected to a truck currently with the key in the on position. So you just go all the way to the right and click on the connect button with the truck. And we'll give it just a moment here to get connected. Now that we've connected, we've gained access to some additional information, uh, such as our VIN number, as you can see here, and then we'll get into our make. And we're currently connected to a Freightliner with a Detroit engine. Then we have the model of our engine here. And we can continue on and get into our odometer, our hours, our PTO, engine serial number when it's available, and our software version. And to the right of that information, we can see we have our engine warning lamps box where it'll indicate that information as it appears on the dash. If we move back to the left here, we can get into our modules. Which modules and manufacturer are we communicating with? On our detected modules box here, we can scroll through and see our full list of different modules we are communicating with. The red truck there indicates 1939, and the blue truck there indicates 1708 protocol. Now we can go ahead and scroll through this list and just take a quick look at what modules we are communicating with on the vehicle and that number to the left is going to be the source address for each module. Now that we know which modules we have on our vehicle we can see the rates that they're communicating. The top bar indicates the rate of the 1939 communication and the bottom is for 1708. Moving on to the center box here we click on DTCs to view our DTCs. Here we can see we have our list now at the top, we have a red one that's going to be active fault codes. Yellow is going to be inactive fault codes. Now we can take a quick scroll through the list that we are working with here today. And we'll notice we have our, our module, our flash code, our fault code number, our FMI, the error counter, and then a brief description of that fault code. Now if we double click on it, it opens up option for diagnostic help. Now that'll take you straight to repair.diesellaptops.com and here you can create your login if you haven't already and go ahead and log in and now we can find some repair information based on the fault code that we're working with here today. So we'll go into truck fault codes and you can do this by selecting make year model and typing in the fault code here or you can enter the VIN number that we have found on PFD after getting connected. I'm just going to paste it in the box for this purpose. And once we do that, it'll bring up all the information based on the VIN number. And then 
Let me scroll through to take a look. And we can go here and click on engine fault codes, engine wiring, or engine repair based on what we'd like to do. I clicked on engine fault codes. It's going to fill that information out for me. And then I just type in the fault code we're working with today, which is going to be that 411. Once we hit search, it'll bring up a list of results. The fault code that we're working with today is SPN 411 FMI 4. So we'll find that. And we'll go ahead and click read more here at the bottom. We'll read a little bit more information about it. We'll just scroll through this real quick so you can get an overview. Now moving on, we want to take a look at the step-by-step -step troubleshooting. So we'll go ahead and make that selection and view the document. So here is just a step-by-step -step troubleshooting tree. And we just scroll through here real quick to look at it. But you just walk right through the steps and follow along. And it's as easy as that as finding repair information on diesel repair. Now we're going to go ahead and exit out and move on and get a quick overview of what else there is to offer on diesel repair. So if we click on the menu button here, you can see we have access to truck fault codes, technical repair docs, wiring diagrams, VIN decoder, and equipment fault codes. Now we're going to go ahead and move over to parts.diesellaptops.com. And here you can use the same login as Diesel Repair and get some good parts information to help you out in your repairs. So don't hesitate to hop on over to those websites, try them out. You can make a free account and see everything there is to offer on Diesel Parts and Diesel Repair. All right, now let's head back to PFD here. And we'll go back to our Informations box here in the middle of the screen. Uh, we can go through different tabs to pull up different information. Next, we'll move to our Gauges tab. This is going to bring up values as they appear on the dash, such as our tachometer, coolant temp, oil pressure, our battery voltage, and road speed. Next, we'll move to the temps tab, and here's just going to be different live temperatures that are available. And then next, we'll move into monitoring. So in our monitoring tab, we can view live data. Here we'll have the description, and we'll have the value for each description if it's available in the 1708 or 1939 columns here. Now, not all data may be available. It's going to be completely dependent upon what you are connected to. Now, we'll scroll through here real quick to get an idea of what you might be able to view when you get connected. Now, we're going to go ahead and move on into the readiness tab. Now, the readiness tab is going to be more for OBD2 purposes. What values you can view here are going to be dependent upon what you're connected to, so you may not see anything. So on our emissions tab here, we'll have our values on the right, and then we'll have our diagram on the left with our RPM and coolant temp at the top of our diagram. And now you can follow through and take these parameter identifiers and match them up on the list to the right, and then you'll be able to view the value for each parameter on that list and you can scroll through it it's a good list of values to look through and it's good information to have on our emissions tab here so next is our trip data tab here we'll find our trip information uh, we'll have a description of the parameter on the left side and then we'll have the value for each parameter on the 1708 or 1939 column, depending on what we're communicating with. And then we can go to the top bar, the top left, and click on the road looking icon, and we can reset our trip data if we so choose. Next is the fuel tab. Here we're going to get into our fuel usage and our fuel usage information here. Then next we'll move into our J1939 LPG or liquid propane gas and we get into that information as it applies to those gas vehicles that operate on the 1939 protocol. Now we'll go to our last tab here, the VIN tab, and it's just going to give us information based on the VIN number uh, that PFD got when we got connected. 
Now that we've covered our information box here in the middle of our screen, we're going to go ahead and move to the graph at the bottom here. So here we have our graph, and then here's our on and off switch for the graph. And below that we have our six values that we can change depending on what we'd like to see on our graph. Now we're going to scroll through here real quick just to get an idea of what we can view on our graph. What values we can view are going to be dependent upon what we are connected to. What are we communicating with? Now we can see a difference in our graph as we're going along. Now we can cut it off and you can see the graph stop and then back on to resume the graph. Now next to that we have a diesel or gas switch depending on what kind of vehicle you're getting connected to. It's on diesel right now but you're going to want to go ahead and switch that to gas if you're working with a gas vehicle. See so we can swap it and then swap it back. Now that we've covered our graph information, let's go ahead and go back up to the top and look at our bi-directional commands. We can go into our OBD2 bi-directional commands. This is going to be mainly used with light and medium duty vehicles. These are going to be your bi-directional commands for your OBD2 connections. Next we're going to go into our heavy duty bi-directional commands. I'm going to open this up so we can see what we're working with. We have some options for Cummins, Detroit, uh, Max Force, pre-emissions, Volvo, and Packar. We can see we have different options depending on which manufacturer we're working with. Now if I wanted to come in and do a regeneration, I'd click on Heavy Duty Bidirectional here. I'd select the proper manufacturer on the list. And in this case, I'm working with a Detroit Diesel. So I'll hover over it and select the DPF Force Regeneration. Here's all the data that you'll be able to view during your regeneration, and then I'll go ahead and click Start Regen if I wanted to carry out this action. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and hit Exit and continue on. The next function we're going to cover here is going to be the Record function. You can click on this red circle here to start a recording of the live data that we are working with. When you stop that recording, it'll save and it'll show you the file destination there on screen. And we can also go to our recordings, click open, and we can select any recording that we've done previously by selecting it and then clicking open. And once you open a file, you can click the play or stop button next to it to play or stop the recording as you see fit. And you can use that green arrow to navigate through that recording as you so choose. Well, that about wraps it up for using and navigating PF Diagnose. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect from our vehicle here today. And then I have one last thing to show you before we close up on this video. Now we're on the Diesel Laptops training website where you can find online and in-person training options. If you're interested in more training opportunities, please visit us at training.diesellaptops.com to see all the trainings we have to offer. We have multiple facilities across the country designed to help meet your needs. So feel free to hop on the website and see if you can't find a training that works for you. Thank you for choosing Diesel Laptops, and we hope you have a great day.